And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the monastery, the open bar of the internet, the world's greatest shit show, and the place where we, the good brothers and sisters of this most holy of temples, seek enlightenment through the drunkest, craziest, and most batshit ways possible. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Mildred, and with me I have a returning good sister to the temple, C coming, to us coming to us straight from Acrea Games. And the co and the co-creator of the upcoming Journey to Acria board game sl slash RPG, the one the one and only Kira Badro Badrova. I'm hoping I got it right this time. Right enough. <laughs> how, how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. Thank you for asking. How are you? I am I am doing good. Um, it is it is nice and some somewhat chilly. Not win not win not at winter's levels yet, but um, I can't do I can't get it. I can't um, I can't be that picky. <laughs> Soon enough, it will be winter again. Yeah, and I'll I'll know because if there's another winter storm in Texas, I'll have a, I'll have everybody outside of the everybody I know outside of the states m emailing me asking if I got caught in it again. <laughs> again. Oh. Um, so. The last time I the last time I had you on, um, you had set you had set up the you had set up the initial Kickstarter, but but for various reasons you had put you had put it on hold, and now you've put now you've put it back up. Um, I guess I, I guess where I'd like to start with is what is from the from the last time from the last time I had you on to to its current to its current incarnation. What would you say have been some of the takeaways? Um, you've had with the ex with the experience of getting the of getting the word out there and see and seeing people's feedback on journey. Um. So, actually, the feedback we got was one of the reasons we decided to cancel it back in October. Mm -hmm. Um. So, uh, with starting the last Kickstarter, we got some attention on our game. Uh, a lot of people who looked at it, what it was, and told us what they liked and what they didn't like. And that basically uh, made us decide to pause the Kickstarter and um, change the game from the core, mm -hmm. basically. Like, keep the, the main idea intact, but change everything around it. And yeah, that, that was kind of our, our thing, to spread the word, ask people what do you like about it, what you what don't you like about it. We set up some forms, Google forms, for people to fill out if they didn't want to be uh, honest in, <laughs> into our face. And um, yeah, so from spreading the word, it's, it's a tough job in today's society. You might think that because of the globalization, because of the internet, it would be easy to just reach everyone but at the same time there are so many people trying to get their thing out it's so easy to get lost in it mm -hmm. but yeah uh yeah that's that's that <laughs> now one of the th one of the when i looked at the setup one of the big things that i noticed is that instead of having instead of having a standardized uh, board setup you're you decided to go with a. You decided to go with more of a series of hexes, um, un, not not unlike not unlike some unlike a fair amount of European board games that I've that I've seen. And I w I will I will admit when I saw the he when I saw the hexes, I immediately made um, Catan jokes because, well, Catan is the one game that I can that no matter how no matter how hard I try, I can't get away from. Well, that's a good thing then. <laughs> I like the game, but it feels but it feels like but both Catan and Monopoly, it feels like they're stalking me. <laughs> so, tell tell me about that hex um, setup. Um. So yeah, I I'll start with the reason why we changed it. Uh, uh that will kind of explain uh the how we use it and why it exists. Mm -hmm. In the first play, so uh, in the first time around, we had a set board. You had some um, slots for your equipment on it, your hero card, and some some piles for the discard and shuffle piles. And uh, the main issue with that was first, not all of our equipment cards fit on it because we had five equipment cards and two more usables mm -hmm. that we um, 
implemented, but there was just no room on the board for it. The second main issue was with the spiral in the middle, which um, which symbolized the path up the mountain. People on the one hand didn't like that it's a spiral, and on the other side, on the the yeah, the second part was that it was the same you you in each playthrough it was the same path at mm -hmm. the same distance events happened at the same distance camp were and it always yeah it, it was a set amount of fields so it was approximately always the same length um those were the three main issues uh of of the board and we started thinking about how to change that the first part was taking the whole player area out of it so uh, each player has now a player board where they have slots for their life tokens, for their um, arcane man energy, which is a new mechanic we put into the game. Um, they have slots for their equipment, for their usable cards. So it, it's all neat and tidy on your player boards now. And it still left us with the board with the spiral or like we could have since we had more space on the board now, we could have made a not spiral, but still it was always the same. Mm -hmm. And from that, it was uh, my idea to make separate tiles. First, we thought about just each tile is one field, uh, but that would result in like, I don't know, 40 different tiles at least. And um, th that's, that's not easy to handle. For people who don't want to spend hours on um, on setting up a game before playing it, it's just it's not not um, ideal. So from that, I looked at Catan because I also really love this game, <laughs> and I really like this hex tile. And in with the hex tile, you have different options of where to come into the tile and where to leave the tile again. Mm -hmm. um, with trying around a bit, we finally decided that each tile has three fields on it, um, with one exception, but that's doesn't really matter and the bonus of having those hex tiles with each three first you can decide how long do you want this game to be do you want it to have 40 uh, fields or 20 fields it's it's a major um advantage because especially me i don't like hour long games i like yeah three three hours is my limit after mm -hmm. that i'm getting i'm getting groggy <laughs> so uh for me it's it's really great that i can make the game shorter without feeling like i'm breaking up some rules, uh, breaking some rules. Uh, I'm just laying a shorter path. And then if it keeps on repeating because we can't defeat the end boss, that's something else. Or if we keep on dying, um, mm. that, that's all right. But if we just take four hours to reach the end boss, that's just too long for me. For other people, it's too short. So uh, now we have this possibility to, to change it up. We have a standard setup which is very easy to make um, since all those tiles have a backside with a number on it. You just check which uh, in which uh, order do I have to put the numbers. Then I turn them around it up. I don't have to think about it if I don't want to have this uh, sort of customization. Um, so yeah, th that's that's basically the um, the the hex tiles. Uh, do you want me to go into anything specific of that? Into you, any details? Um, when it comes to when it comes now, you mentioned that that with the hex tiles, or rather with the original board, that people didn't care for the the sameness of of it. That mm -hmm. it, that all all the all the events and all the encounters would always happen at the at the same places. Um, when it comes to the when it comes to the hex system. How how have you how have you guys um responded to that to that particular thing so that a so that a given run of the game will st will feel different each time? Um, for one, um, it's also the possibility to add uh camps and event fields with tokens, separate mm -hmm. tokens that. So uh, at one point you can say, okay, we'll have. Every second slot, there will be an event, a global event that affects everyone. That also change, changes up the field. Uh, another possibility is to say, okay, uh, the camp isn't in like uh, the usual. Usually, the camp is each five steps. 
but we say okay there's only one camp and this is in front of the end boss so it makes it really tough so you're uh, in each encounter you're like worrying if i die now i'll start at the beginning and have to um and have a disadvantage against the other players so so you start thinking more uh, with those small adjustments you can uh, modify the way the game feels mm -hmm. which I, I can i can definitely see and i can see some people taking the hard mode hard mode approach of put of having as few having as few camps as possible because well i think it i think i think within every i think with it with every gamer there is a tinge of masochism just a tinge <laughs> yeah oh. true more so more so with others especially crazy people like me who su who suffer through kaizo world um but you meant you mentioned a arcane mechanic that's that's going to be no that's going to be new to the to this particular um iteration of the game I'd like you to go into what into what prompted the introduction of that mechanic and how it's go and how it's going to come into play in the actual game. So um, it was prompted by uh, feedback. So people were looking for something to collect. It was just um, something was missing, something uh, like like coins or. Um, something like that mm -hmm. and so we sat down and we brainstormed we had like 10 different ideas uh including coins and special shops up the mountain but uh the, that would have um that would have to include some special items and uh we we discard that idea and what we stuck with was arcane energy it's basically magic so in our world of akraya uh, it's a world filled with magic especially around the cursed mountain mm-hmm and all the magic around it is is um is corrupted and that's why the creatures are evil the humans are all a bit insane that that live there and based on that um mostly jessica my my colleague uh, came up with the um backstory of their cane energy and that all heroes can handle magic all of our heroes eight heroes can handle magic and during their um, travels up to the mountaintop, they can uh, collect this sort of magic. If, uh, if they have a good alignment, they collect cleansed energy. If they are of a, uh, of a bad alignment, they collect uh, the corrupted energy. Mm -hmm. And um, they collect it basically as it, it's, it's like payment sometimes you encounter a creature that that's like okay you can fend it off with magic or you lose life because you can't fend it off mm -hmm. or you have some items that you want to infuse with this magic so they get uh stronger so when you infuse it with with two arcane magic uh, energy it will have a uh, plus two attack something like that mm -hmm. um there are some some different mechanics like the end boss uh, if you have a certain amount of arcane energy you will get stronger against this particular end boss but if you draw another end boss uh, and you have only cleansed energy uh, but it needs uh, the corrupted energy to um, so, so you get stronger so yeah i rambled a bit but i hope <laughs> you understand what, what i meant with it yeah. yeah i can get i can certainly get behind i can certainly get behind that um and given given the other thing the other thing to to note is um, on the com on the component list when it comes to the en when it comes to the energy crystals you have black and white ones and from what I'm looking at with some of the hero cards they they either collect black or white um, arcane energy um, mechanically are there any leanings towards the difference between characters that collect e that collect either one um, it's um... For one, it's player preference. So mm -hmm. it's um, wait a second. I'll close the window so this dog won't make me insane. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'll be right back. Insane er. So um, okay, an energy. So uh, for one, it's the heroes uh, that collect only one type. 
like the light heroes only collect the white energy and the darkness ones only collect the black energy it's easier for people who who are not that familiar with the mechanics or who don't want to think or they want to have this this alignment i'm a good hero i yeah they don't get this choice but uh it's also easier for them they collect their white energy um there are some cards um some some treasure cards that give you the possibility to curse or uh, curse someone or give a blessing to someone, some other player. And uh, those are also defined by whether if you're a light hero, you can only do blessings. If you're a darkness hero, you can only curse someone. Mm -hmm. um, th that's the most straightforward characters. If you have a storm or a venom hero who can both collect uh, dark and white energy, they can also curse and bless other players uh, then it, it gives you more the tough decisions uh, like which energy do you collect now do you take a white or do you take a black and if in the end you reach the end boss and you, and you have three white and two black and but you need to uh, five black you kind of screwed up mm -hmm. <laughs> um, because each time uh, with with um, with storm and venom heroes you can always choose which which energy you take um you don't have to decide it at the start of the game it's through the game you each time you have to choose one you you take one uh, accordingly and um that also makes it more like like it's more your fault if something doesn't work out so if you have an an item card that needs um cleansed energy to be infused but you only collected black so far it's mm -hmm. it's your own like issue and you can now decide okay well i'm switching to cleansed energy so i can infuse it but then you lose the item and again you don't reach the the five energy that you need for the end boss so yeah it, it makes it more complicated and some people want that some people don't so we want to keep this op option open now within within the within the particular setup you mentioned it being you mentioned it being something to, that arcane energy is something to collect um, when when you say when you say that is it is, is there is there any um, is there any similarity or difference to to victory points in other games or is it, or is that not the case uh it's it's no it's not um it's not connected with you winning, uh, killing some monsters or something. Um, for one, you gain arcane energy when you spend the night in a camp. Mm -hmm. So the less camps you have, the less energy you collect by default. So if you end your turn in a camp, you get energy. But if you just pass pass a camp on your way up, you don't collect it. And uh, the other possibility to collect arcane energy is through encounters, and that doesn't mean killing some. Sometimes it does. If it's a very strong monster and you kill it, you can draw the energy from them. Mm -hmm. But oftentimes it's when you interact with a creature or you're, um, you're exploring a place, and you have the option to either, like, um, for, for example, you meet um, a ghost lady, and you have the option either to, if, if you're interacting and not fighting straight, straight away, you have the option to either um, free her or um, or like um, ignore her and mm -hmm. or like talk to her. And if you free her, you get the arcane energy because uh, th that's how it works, basically, mm -hmm. with the magic. But if you decide to talk to her, you instead f uh, find a treasure. So it's lots of those small things. Now, when it comes to when it, when it comes to the I, the ideas with with arcane and energy, and the reason that I'm focusing on that is it's a case of a of a seemingly minor change having much larger implications. Is the fact that the the fact that the and that um the energy that you can get is capped. Um, with the with the amount with the amount um, the maximum amount being on the being on the player board itself. Um, mm -hmm. When when it came to when it came to determining the amount of the amount of energy that some that somebody could get and the amount that they could potentially hold, was was an effort maintained to make sure that players didn't try and 
um, then try and get as defensive as possible with arcane energy that they that it's gonna have to get use um not really because uh because uh that's not an issue with how the mag the arcane energy works mm -hmm. so you can uh fill it up uh to the top so you have eight arcane energy mm -hmm. and uh you um and yeah yeah what what do you want to do with it so um it doesn't mean that you're stronger than everyone else so if you have a full equipment and you have spells on your hand and you have great preparation cards it doesn't matter who you encounter you will always be able to defeat them even without the energy mm -hmm. uh, or like with the energy it doesn't make a difference so um the cap of the energy is so you don't have 10 you have eight mm -hmm. as a maximum and that makes it um, like harder to. Um, well, I, I'm I'm trying to think about <laughs> how how it could benefit the player in in such a major way that they're um, overpowered. But in the end, if if you encounter the end boss, I had in the last playthrough we had, mm -hmm. I had enough energy to defeat. Uh, I had enough energy to get the bonus but um, my items weren't good enough. So even with the arcane energy, I just needed one more card to defeat the boss, which I didn't have. So it, uh, because it doesn't matter if you have eight or if you have five, it's it, you, you can only use the five energy with the end boss. It's not like if you have eight, you get eight plus eight attack. If you have five, you get plus five attack. It's, it's a set amount. All right. Now, when it comes to, when it comes to equip, when it comes to equipment, one of the things I did, one of the things I did notice is some is some of them um, having the in, having the infusion option. Um, and when it comes to when it comes to in, when it comes to infusion, um, does that does that sig in a lot of cases with items with infusion options does that significantly change the potency of said item? At the risk of the fact that if you if you lose the infused item, then you're not getting you're not getting a refund. Uh, yeah, it's always a risk to infuse them. There are some cards that where the infusion is uh not that like painful to you lose, but sometimes if you have a a shield that gives you plus one resistance and you infuse it and get plus two attack, it's a very powerful item all of the sudden, and when you lose it, it, it hurts. Mm -hmm. On other times, if if the infusion just makes you um, not lose life in events, it's it's sad, but it's not that that um, um, like like life changing in that moment. <laughs> not sure if that's the right word. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's not. It's not a case of you lose the you lose the thing and then you're complete. Then you're completely screwed for the rest of the game. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's never like that. Unless you're already in the final stage where you're all you, all of the heroes are fighting the end boss, then every every item lost is <laughs> is making it like nearly impossible to replace. Mm -hmm. But um, during the way up the mountain, whatever you lose, it's there's a good chance you'll get a good replacement uh, in the following turns, or um, or even something better. All right. Now, when it comes to when it, now when it comes to um event when it came to when it came to events, um, are events are events largely the are events largely the same as it as it was since the last time that I spoke with you, or were or were there some um, were there some tweaking done to events based on feedback? I honestly can't remember how the events were back uh, in in October 2020. Mm -hmm. I think we did a rework of the events, but uh, whether we did or not, uh, we're doing a rework right now because we redesigned the layout. There will be no images on the event cards. So we have much more space for cool effects to happen because we want to make them even more global right now the mm -hmm. uh, yeah yeah I, i'm i'm sure we rework them but uh not from how they worked but rather of what happens on the specific cards and now we want to rework that again and make it even even more enjoyable for the players and more um 
maybe tough choices, uh, maybe different things <clears throat> like that. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to this brings me to one of the big, one of the bigger pillars with Journey to Ecria, which is encounters, um, the the fight phase and all and all that. And I'm curious what the feedback you you got on the you got on the initial run with this particular system, and what and what you what you may have changed or tweaked to um, to take to take those um, critiques into account. Uh. One of the biggest uh, negative feedbacks we had for the encounters is that it's always rolling the dice. It was always the same. You you draw an encounter, and sometimes even before uh, it was introduced to you, you already rolled the die. Mm -hmm. And um, we changed that. We went away from that. We uh, added more options where it you didn't have to roll the dice. We added a few options where you actually choose, like I said earlier, with the possibility to either help her or um, talk to her. Or f for another example is you have a wolf cup and you can either put it down for a big reward or uh, save it for a small reward. Mm -hmm. um, stuff like that. So, so people actually have uh, fun going through the different options each time and it's not just simple rolling the dice so we changed that and um yeah what was the second part of the question um the sec the second part the second part was ha is just ha is just how how th how you've um cha how you've changed the setup to ac to accommodate the uh, feedback you got oh yeah yeah okay yeah that's i i think th i answered that and mm -hmm. in the uh, board, um, it, it's still the same how it works because mm -hmm. uh, that was actually never an issue. Yeah. Now, within th within that um, within that within that particular setup, um, when it came when it came to when it, when it came to um, when it came to when it came to encounter when it came to encounters where the where um where fight was chosen were there were there um, situations where the, where um, dif where difficulty had spiked in in play in play testing, or did that not really happen? Um, what what do you mean with with uh, so, so uh, yeah? When it what I mean by spiking is uh -huh. where is where there there were certain um there were cer certain cars or certain obstacles that may that may have proven a bit a bit trick a bit trickier than others more often um not specifically with the encounters it's more often than uh our wording wasn't that clear to players that they didn't know what to do like uh, lose life or gain life and uh because we try to work with items but um uh, yeah it, it's it's not always that clear, but with mm. uh, actually on how to proceed with an encounter or something like that, we never had any issues. Yeah. Now, when it now um when it when it comes to the when it comes to the boss fight, obviously we're obviously there's still the whole thing of a boss for each for each of the factions. Um. But were there any major changes done when it came to how when it came to how boss fights worked? Uh, not really. The only difference um, we made them a bit stronger with uh, the way the items are, and we included the um, arcane energy option, mm -hmm. which wasn't there before because there, there wasn't such thing. Um, yeah, we switched up a bit uh, of what effects happen when you encounter them, but nothing from the mechanics. Mm -hmm. mechanics it's the same yeah oh now when it ca now when it comes to when it ca i don't i definitely don't i definitely don't remember um happiness and char happiness and charisma even even though it's essentially um flavor i i don't remember those be those being in the initial run, or maybe I'm misremembering. Uh, we had them in the initial run, but we never mentioned them in the rulebook or anywhere because uh, 
we didn't think about that it would be such an issue, but now it's a part of the rulebook since people kept asking, yeah, what is this? Uh, <laughs> what is this? I've never heard of this before. And mm -hmm. so we had to clarify that this is just flavor and uh, just something you can include in your role playing if, if you want to do it, but you don't have to. Yeah. Um, now, with with all with all of that in with all of that in mind, um, when set when set when setting up the uh, when setting up um, some of the main pillars with the with the game, were there any um, were there any aspects with how with how the game overall plays that the that um some people that some people took to more easily than others and some that were a bit more difficult for people to get to get, to get a handle on from what you saw of play testing um one of the harder things people uh struggled a bit with was this, which is partially our own fault um and i mentioned it a bit earlier already uh, it's the life points we have the same symbol for life points as for blood counters mm -hmm. so um if if it's on a card it says lose one blood drop it means that you take one token with a blood drop and put it on your board <laughs> which uh people they usually figure it out when playing but at the beginning they always struggle to what what is, does it mean and we are still planning on changing that um from the other mechanics um even people who usually don't do any role playing got really easy into the role playing part of it of in mm -hmm. of being a G, uh, game master even though it's the if you read about it the more intimidating part but it's actually very easy to be a game master in our game mm -hmm. so yeah uh, that's something that people get uh, into pretty quickly from in, in the game play, play blah, in the play testing we witness <laughs> mm -hmm. now within Something something I've always been curious about when when it comes to the when it comes to the design is more often than not were did people treat the boss fight as a race to get to it first or or did you more often see people um try and collaboratively deal with the boss? Um, with the boss, it was always uh versus each other, but um. It was pretty different on how people got to the mountaintop in the first place. So there were some people who were starting to um, curse each other from the very first minute. <laughs> uh, but more often we th saw people working together for the first half of the board. And then in the second half it always got more and more um, um, against each other than uh, with each other. It, it was less helping and fights, less... Um, Less uh, trading cards and so mm -hmm. on. It was more an I I'm I'm, I'm going to win. And in the beginning, it was more of an oh yeah, let's do this together. Oh, I can help you if you help me later. Yeah, and um, now one thing one thing that I'm always curious about when it comes when it comes to board games, especially advent especially adventure board games or whatever the subgenre is um, refer referred to this week to stay ahead of the law. Um, <laughs> is is the is the concept of rule variants? Um, is that is that something that's been experimented with? Uh, how do you mean? I I don't know. I'm sorry. I didn't um, didn't understand how you mean that. Um, slight slight modifications to to certain to certain rules to emphasize. Um, different play styles, or to or to take or to take it from angles that uh, that may that may not be done that may not necessarily be a default in the co in the um, core setup. Uh, you you mean like um, alternative rules, or do you mean like uh, people f um, doing their own? Own, more uh, more uh, the uh, former because ho house rules okay. are going to be inevitable no matter what <laughs> yeah um actually well the only modification we offer f for gameplay uh different gameplay is how you set the the board modification mm -hmm. like you have the standard setup and we suggest a couple of different setups 
uh, th three different setups will be in the rule book for now. Like maybe that will change because we don't have the rule book final. Mm -hmm. um, we also encourage the playstyle where you really go into character, that you don't um, choose by your items, but choose by your alignment, your who your character is. That's why Jessica is working a lot on the stories in our Kickstarter campaign right now. We've published already th four hero stories. Mm -hmm where you can read about who, who those people are, what their motivations are, and learn a bit more about them so you can roleplay them better. And we really encourage that because that also change, changes the play style a lot. If, if you have an encounter where um, where from your items it's a smart thing to, um, to talk with them, but you decide in the beginning that you hate them, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be uh, like very in character like to say okay let's talk to them because my items say so. Mm -hmm. So yeah, um, that said, uh, right now we don't fo uh, we don't offer any alternative rules as for that, since we want to focus on making this uh, game perfect, and once that is done, we were thinking about uh, maybe. Um, figuring out how to make a cooper cooperative playstyle. So I, I hope I answered your question. <laughs> yeah. Um and speaking of, and speaking of that speaking of that um when it comes to when it, com when it comes to the when it comes to the co the um, cooperative at the cooperative aspect um Were was were there any were there any diff were there any difficulties when um, when you had mul when you had multiple players um, han handling the boss f handling the boss fight? Um, well, right now it's just uh, we've never actually tried that because, uh, as I said, we're focusing on making the game perfect first before we uh, think about uh, balancing out a possible cooperative modus but mm -hmm. mode but right now it's just how do you combine it if you just say okay you have the end boss and this player helps me and i get like in all other fights when somebody helps me i get plus three attack and now you win yeah right now it's just okay well you both won and it yeah it's it's just okay i didn't have a spell card so i asked the hero next to me it, it's not really a cooperative mechanic it's people can do that of course we can't it's house rules so if people decide yeah let's do it like that okay <laughs> but that's not uh planned um for us since the winner would from our rules the winner would always be the one who actually won and the one who actually fought mm -hmm. in other situations if you decide that both hero stats count, so both can be the winners, then the end boss is too weak. So in a possible uh, cooperative mode, the end boss would be much stronger, since uh, it has to be balanced to like two players at once, <coughs> at once, and not um, just one. Yeah, I'm I sorry, can, my voices. I could, um, I could most certainly see, I could most certainly see that. Um. Now, give, given uh, given all of, given all of that, um, something that something that I did notice getting shifting back to the whole arc, to the whole arcane thing is that the the uh, dip, the types of the types of arcane ar arcane energy that can be taken is um, so, is somewhat tied to the um, to the el to the um, arcane alignment of the of a given hero. Um, here, um, light heroes can only get white. Um, storm and storm and poison can get can pick whichever they prefer, and darkness can only get corrupted. Um, mm -hmm. I'm cu I'm curious as to the reasoning for that for that particular setup. Was it as a means to integrate the alignment setup? Um, yeah. So for for one, yes. For one, it was to integrate it. Uh, but um. In the th thought process, it was more like, okay, we have two kinds of arcane energy that can be used 
the same but like in different situations you can use black and you can use white and then we thought about okay what makes sense because as a role players ourselves we we don't want to make it just okay everybody can do everything they want but there has to be some some reasoning to it that's why we decided on darkness with uh curse uh, with with corrupted energy and um and light with the cleansed energy but uh with the other two it was more of a, like okay what what options can we we don't want we could just assign that storm is uh cleansed and venom is um corrupted but that wouldn't make sense mm -hmm. so um th that's uh, we first thought about okay so the player decides which one they want to collect in the beginning and from this thought process we came up with yeah uh why don't we let let uh let the op option completely open so people can choose um each time they they get energy all right i i, I can certainly get that now you, you mentioned you mentioned that even now there are some refinements that you that you're um put that you're putting under consideration what exactly is that entailing um so one refinement we're working on is the card effects in the encounters themselves we want to uh let uh, put even more of those tough decisions in them um right now we have a lot of still dice rolling and choosing a number that's mm -hmm. something we also included so you don't roll the dice but choose a number between uh, one and six usually um which just gives you the more like possibility to just work with your brain and not just constantly the same but mm -hmm. we want to even re reduce that even more and put in more options where you really have to think okay am i killing the poor little wolf cop or um and getting a good thing or doing the right thing but getting not that much so more, more more stuff like that this this is which will be really memorable because um if you have a good like round where everyone is great at inventing a fun idea to even the lamest card effect th that's great but we can't expect all players to to have that sometimes uh you, you just need a little bit more input and we want the cards to be memorable and not just yeah and um Another thing is the event cards. Mm -hmm. It's also card effects, yeah, uh, that we want to have more, that, that just more stuff happens. And another big review uh, rework will be the um, enchantments. So it's blessing and curse cards, the treasures. Because right now we don't really like how, we like how they work, but we don't like what they offer. We had to limit it a lot because of... Um, how much space there was on the card. So we had an initial idea and when we tried to put it on the card, it just didn't fit. So we, we, we reduced a lot of that just so it fits the card, but then in the gameplay, it wasn't fun anymore because it was just, okay, yeah, it's, why should I use this card if I, yeah, I, I can just throw it away and get a better one instead. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, that's something we, uh, which is uh, right now on, on our, top to-do list to rework them so they make sense and so it's a, a card you don't want to lose <laughs> and a card you want to use at some point and maybe keep it for a better occasion or something like that. I got, I got you. Well, I'll, I'll and, oh, go ahead. Uh, yeah, and the, the other major thing, it's just the art. It's not a rework per se, but uh, like doing the artworks and also the... Um, like the the hexagon tiles they are still missing their final touch so we still count it as a rework but it will be just some magic effects on them so they look cooler and not just plain landscape mm -hmm. well i'll cer i'll certainly be looking forward to seeing how how all of that um develops personally um and with with all that with all that in mind i do want to sincerely thank you for taking the time out of your schedule and braving the hell of time zones to come all the way back to the temple. And Thank you for having me. Mm -hmm. And anytime you see fit to return, the door is always open. As I often say around here, drinking is not mandatory, but it is encouraged.
And, of course, a sincere thanks goes out to everyone who took the time out of their schedule to come onto the show and enjoy the madness. And there will be plenty more where that came from, as there always is here, on the open bar of the internet. But until then, on behalf of the good brothers present and not present, my name is Mildra, I am your gaming monk, stay fucking frosty, everybody! <laughs>